Welcome to AM Best Audio. Embedded insurance is rapidly transforming the insurance landscape, and technological advancements and data analytics are significantly driving that trend. While many see the shift to embedded insurance simplifying the customer journey, it also opens up new distribution channels and increases market reach for insurers. By integrating their products directly into the purchase processes of various goods and services, insurers can tap into a broader customer base, including those who might not actively seek out insurance otherwise. I'm Lori Chortis, Brandbest TV. And joining us now to discuss that is Brian Davis, Executive Vice President and Head of View by Hub. Brian, welcome. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Lori, thank you for having me. Pleasure to be with you. Brian, what trends are you seeing around distribution consolidation in the industry today? And what is the role of insurance and amid that consolidation in today's disrupted world? Absolutely. Uh, certainly market conditions are pushing us further toward digitization and distribution consolidation, uh, whether it's climate driven nat uh, natural disasters that are impacting insurance premiums across the U.S., driving costs to unaffordable levels. I mean, it, it hails in Arizona, uh, Lori, and it ices in San Antonio, places that consumers are not used to weather uh, happening. So whatever your taste, something is different uh, in the uh, climate. Uh, according to a recent report by the Federal Reserve, homeowners with lower income, um, you know, those living in the South and those who had already been financially affected by a natural disaster were all less likely to have homeowners insurance. So for example, more than two in 10 homeowners in the South with an income less than 50,000 did not have homeowners insurance. Additionally, hard markets, uh, disrupted supply chains and increased loss costs are pressuring carriers to reduce expenses. It's hard to pay claims, be a good underwriter and spend a lot of money marketing. Uh, to customers. Um, so, um, and then, you know, carriers have to invest a lot of capital into becoming digital uh, underwriters themselves. Um, so when you couple that also with consumer behavior uh, is evolving and the pandemic, I always say was a blessing and a curse. Um, consumers were forced into a digital world. We, we call them internally digital refugees. Uh, folks who would have never gotten on a Zoom call or a Teams call with their insurance agent were forced to interact that way. And in that forcing, they actually like it now. So that's resulted in, you know, consumers accepting new ways of interacting with, uh, you know, historically traditional uh, ways of going to an agent's office. Now you can Zoom in or FaceTime in. Um, and consumers are comfortable with that. So all of those trends together, Lori, are what's really driving um, distribution consolidation. You were part of a panel discussion on embedded insurance mm -hmm. at the recent InsureTech Insights USA conference. Can you tell us about some of the key takeaways from that discussion? And are you seeing a growing demand for the coverage today? Well, the discussion could have lasted forever on one freaking question, like what is embedded insurance? Uh, and I always say there's a what and a how to embedded insurance. Um, the what standard deviation is pretty wide. It could be embedded insurance directly with a carrier. It can be um, embedded insurance powered by SaaS providers. Um, here at View by Hub, we are really the first true embeddable digital brokerage that brings all of those aspects together and brings the human touch as well to that. And that was, you know, some fresh, freshly needed um, uh, kind of capabilities to the embedded world. Um, and so we are certainly one of the first, you know, large brokers who made uh, significant capital investments to bring um, brokerage concepts to embedded. I, I like to say when you ask, when folks ask me, what is View by Hub? We're just trying to be a good broker um, and we're trying to be a good broker, not only across the, you know, quote to bind side of things, 
but uh, delivering advice and counsel to the clients, even post journey, which that's been a that's a huge opportunity for brokers to really show their worth to consumers. But so that's the what side of things. The how side of things is really exciting and where a lot of innovation is coming along. And the same things we just got through talking about it with advancements in cloud computing, digitization, consumer preferences. One of the ones that we saw when we talked to our consumers is, you know, as much as us inside the in insurance industry, I, I'm 20 plus years on the carrier side, first time on the broker side. You know, we love talking about insurance inside, you know, uh, the carrier side and inside the broker side. But when you talk to consumers, they really don't care. <laughs> you know, consumers are busy with their everyday lives. Uh, they I like to say they care more about their heart and their heart is, uh, hey, what am I streaming on Netflix? Uh, what do my kids uh, activities for the day and what uh, is going to be for dinner? Those are the things that matter most. Hey what new house am I going to buy or what new car am I going to buy? And, you know, uh, what am I going to have delivered via Amazon Prime? Those are things that are more top of mind for consumers. So the concept, Lori, of embedded insurance, when you match to what consumers are really uh, paying attention to versus a head transaction like insurance, you know, can insurance latch on to heart transactions? Heart transactions is a house transaction or a car transaction. It's not like consumers are lining up waiting for the new vanishing deductible to come out from an insurance carrier, but they are lined up for the new iPhone uh, to come out. So uh, that's an opportunity for insurance to latch on to things that consumers really care about. And that's also an opportunity to mitigate what we like to call the insurance protection gap. And so instead of us just saying, hey, you can get insurance easy. We're going to get you the cheapest coverage and that's it. Well, for the last 20 years, the world has gotten more digital, but the insurance protection gap has actually gotten wider. And that's a disservice we provided to consumers for the industry. So we think uh, view as a digital brokerage, giving advice to clients to say, hey, even though that policy is cheaper, that's not the right policy for you because you need actual cash value, I mean, uh, replacement costs on your home versus actual cash value. And customers just don't know what they're buying in, in a lot of instances. And they're finding that out at claim, which is not a good experience. So that's kind of what we talked about on the panel. Like I said, we could have spent uh, hours on one question. What is embedded insurance? There are lots of different types of entities trying to embed in those customer journeys. We are a true broker, not a pretend broker, but a technology enabled broker has a real case for winning in this space. Absolutely. Brian, how are technological advancements and data analytics influencing the growth of embedded insurance? Well, tremendous. I mean, particularly across, if you imagine an insurance value chain, Lori, from, hey, I'm just looking, I need to research, um, you know, what options are out there for insurance. Hey, I need to understand what ACV is um, to all the way I need to buy uh, insurance, quote and buy, and all the way to, hey, I now have homeowner's insurance and carrier just giving me a non-renewal notice or they're increasing my premiums, which that is the lay of the land going on right now. So there's a, there's a broad spectrum of a customer involvement in the insurance purchasing journey the cool thing is the advancements in cloud computing. I mean, if you look at just regular TV advertisements right now, you see AWS cloud uh, computing advertisements. You see Google cloud computing advertisements. It's like cloud is now like, you know, hey, I'm going to Macy's and get a new shirt. Right. So more people are participating in cloud environments now. And when more data is being shared in cloud environments and I still don't quite understand what cloud environment is, but you know, people are there and entities are there and more data is there, then it's easy for me to take data from one place to the next and do what it is we need to do, whether it's advise you, whether it's quote you on insurance, whether it's buying your insurance, it's more easier to access data. That has advanced dramatically uh, over the last 10 to 20 years. And like I said earlier, 
COVID forced even quicker advancements in that because the world, I mean, literally went digital overnight. I mean, that's the way we interacted with each other. So things that were on the horizon accelerated pretty quickly with uh, COVID. So I think COVID, like I said, was a blessing and a curse and accelerated some of the technology capabilities. Things that, uh, another part, part to that is things that were hard to engineer are and uh, more cost prohibitive to engineer is now easier to engineer and the cost has come dramatically down. So that that creates opportunity for legacy entrants like brokers, legacy brokers to now get um, you know more modern and digital because the cost to do that is relatively speaking less than it was before. So you're seeing more entities participate in the cloud. You're seeing more entities you know interact via what we call APIs, which are like you know explain that to simple. It's like Lego blocks of code, right? Instead of you know so it's the barrier of entry is way less than what it was when I was in this space ten years ago on the carrier side. So that is uh, a, a way for us to give a better experience to an everyday consumer and consumers accept it. Like, hey, when I go get a quote, I don't need to know like what your roof, um, how old your roof is and what type of roof you have because that data is available. I just need your name and address. And so 10 years ago, it probably took, you know, 10, 15 minutes to generate a quote on a homeowner or auto policy. Now on our platform, you can generate a quote in, you know, 30 seconds or less. Um, so data uh, capabilities and technology capabilities have dramatically advanced, accelerated by COVID. Now you're seeing things like, hey, with all this data up there, um, traditional things, tr traditional for me, because AI was is about over 10 years, probably older than that, if you really talk to the historians on this. But what's different is there's way more data to reason. Uh, reason with. So, you know, techniques like AI can take quantum computing into a whole nother realm of how we engage with Lori as a consumer. What are the main challenges that insurers face when implementing embedded insurance solutions? Yeah, while there is many advancements in technology capabilities and many advancements on access to data, um, there's still a lot of friction between distributors and manufacturers. Um, and that standard deviation is quite large. Some carriers are digital, some carriers are not. Some carriers know things like APIs and some carriers can't spell A, P, or I. So, you know, there's still friction um, in the system. And, you know, the folks on view, we come from the carrier side, so we know that language, we know the nuances of, you know, um, what carriers really are open to in a digital experience versus what they would love a human really in, in engaging and providing a front level um, aspect of underwriting for them because they may not be as sophisticated as carrier A. Um, and so that's why we approach the equation when you factor in all parties involved, including carriers. Um, you know, humans need to be involved. So as much digital as we talk about, the folks who said, hey, this is a digital only trend transaction and agents are going to be, you know, out outsourced and eliminated. And that just didn't happen, <laughs> you know, because of all the friction. Um, it's a state regulated by state reg regulated market. So there's still a lot of nuances um, that you have to capture in the journey and and so until we get to that point where all of those nuances are digitized carriers are cloud enabled fully in the end you know you're you're going to have friction so that that's some of the biggest challenges in embedded insurance wherein hey it might be a fast experience to get a quote and hey it might be a fast experience to have somebody contact you and then all of a sudden the, it comes to a screeching halt um, and that's painful for consumers. Um, hey, you're asking me that question again, and I already told it to you over here, you know. So that's still some of the big challenges. And 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 quite another uh, one that I would say in this is, you know, carriers are still 
you know, trying to determine like, hey, the role of distribution and the carrier, right? I mean, you still have some carriers who, hey, I have this love-hate relationship with my <laughs> distribution partners. So I'm going to build my own distribution and, you know, come straight to the carrier and bypass the broker. And that's kind of been going on for, you know, beginning, beginning of time. And I think, you know, with costs increasing, with climate change occurring, I think you see a lot of carriers thinking about, hey, can I be a great distributor, great underwriter versus, hey, let me just be a great underwriter and partner with distributors. So I think we still have that challenge where, you know, we're frenemies in some cases instead of, hey, we're partners in others. So those are two big challenges that I would highlight. Customize your data experience. Best Link now offers an interactive company dashboard that provides company-level intelligence in a fast, user-friendly interface featuring interactive tables, charts, and Sparkline performance histories. Customize the dashboard tiles to prioritize the insurer ratings, data, and analytics that best support your workflow. AM Best. Our insight, your advantage. One of the topics you and the other panelists discussed was that given the entry of major players like tech giants into the embedded insurance space, how can the industry promote market diversity and prevent monopolistic tendencies? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I mean, I think our strategy is to be neutral to the consumer. Um, and we maintain that in every aspect of our journey, whether it's the data we use, we don't sell our customers' data to other folks. Um, we use the data that we receive from consumers to advise you on new business and you know, in a retention setting. We pride ourselves on bringing choice and neutrality to that process. And we stay true to what we are good at, uh, good insurance <laughs> brokers. Um, I'm not necessarily the best development a company in the world. So why don't we partner with, uh, you know, development companies? I'm not the best. I'm not an underwriter. So it's good for me to have good carrier relationships and partnerships. And there are some other uh, uh, products and services that carriers are not the best at. So we can bring in those folks to bring the best experience. I call it the team of love to our clients. And I think if the industry focuses on doing what's best for the consumer, that's a good way to prevent monopolies. But, you know, here comes regulators, of course, <laughs> who says, like, we're not going to wait for you guys to figure this out on your own. So certainly, you know, you, you, you have to pay attention to, you know, regulators saying, hey, the rules might now need to be the same across all 50 states. Um, instead of New York having a set of rules, California is having a set of rules, Florida having a set of rules. You know, you're seeing some chatter on that, particularly when folks in California can't get insurance coverage at all. Folks in Florida are having some trouble getting insurance coverage. And so when supply starts to become pretty limited and that's a, you know, beyond one or two state or three state problem, then there, there's some solutioning that has to happen. I, I'm personally a, a free market uh, uh, thinker, so I like to bring innovation um, to that uh, versus government <laughs> regulation. I see how that has negative effects to consumers. So I think the industry has an opportunity to uh, drive more partnerships um, to mitigate, hey, there's one player in this space that everyone has to go through go to, but there are different aspects of the journey that are better suited for different players. And I think if we, as an industry, take that approach and take an innovative partnership mindset, um, that's, a, that's a good way to, you know, kind of hedge the, um, you know, the kind of compliance type trends or monopoly type opportunities that can arise. Right. So I, I think it, it's in a good spot um, if we, uh, as an industry, run to harder markets versus running from harder markets. Absolutely. You talked earlier about Embedded helping to close the protection gap. Can you tell us a little bit more about how Embedded Insurance, along with traditional insurance models, can close the 
protection gaps in areas such as healthcare, natural catastrophes, and commercial insurance? And how are you working with your clients in this area? Yeah, I mean, I like to say, like I said earlier, we just try to be a good broker. And a good broker is neutral, provides choice, and advises their clients on an ongoing basis. As simple as that sounds, that was not happening. Uh, in, in a modern and, um, you know, technology-driven way that interacts to the client's world versus, hey, to get neutral choice and advice, come to my office between the hours of eight and three, sit down and let's talk about your insurance needs. Well, who does that in this day and age? Folks are busy. Um, and so, but it doesn't mean that they don't want advice and counsel and that you shouldn't deliver that as a part of your value prop. And so that's a strong way to do that is make things easy for customers to say, hey, what should I do in this situation? What coverage should I have? Have You would be um, alarmed uh, uh, about how many customers, if you really ask them, what coverage do you have? Uh, for your auto or home or boat or you pick whatever thing you're protecting, they're going to tell you, I have uh, nationwide, progressive or, you know, travelers. <laughs> well, the question wasn't like which carrier you have. The question was, what coverage do you have and who should be doing that for the lorries of the world? Right. You could say, hey, carriers, well, take a carrier like nationwide and had for years exclusive captive agents and that was their job but they're going to advise that client mainly on nationwide products and so what if the nationwide product is not the right product for lori they're not going to say hey i know you went nationwide let me go over here and get you to the right carrier so captives are not neutral and they don't bring choice um, and then you talk about an independent agent, right? It's really where this has been, but think about the traditional independent agent to get that choice and advice. You're gonna drop the experience way down. And who's gonna go to the independent agent's office today and sit down and have a meeting? So how can you bring the effortless experience to say a lemonade may have with choice and neutrality and advice that an independent agent has had and deliver that in a modern experience, right? And that combination, along with partnerships, um, you know, more manufacturers, more mergers of MGAs and ENS providers taking risk in harder markets is how we attack that insurance protection gap. A lot of consumers just haven't been advised properly. Um, so we want to close that by delivering advice in an ongoing manner in a modern way. Uh, so imagine a world wherein you're interacting with your uh, independent agent or broker through your phone and asking questions or getting delivered proactive advice and saying, hey, for $2 or more, you could increase your limits. You know, and, and that's a real life example, Lori, of customers who could have gone from a higher one level of protection to another level of protection for $2 or more. And we had a client who was severely underinsured and we didn't advise them on what their insurance protection needs are. And it came back to, man, that would only cost $2 more a month to do so. That's a disservice on our industry and what we're tackling. Brian, how will consumer expectations and behavior influence the development and integration of embedded insurance in the coming years? And how will advancements in AI and machine learning shape the future of the coverage? Yeah, totally. I mean, well, first of all, you have to meet consumers where they are, number one. Um, as I said, they told us their heart is not with insurance. So the, the industry really needs to get over ourselves and really focus on the consumer. Um, not everyone has a claim. so. You know, insurance is not top of mind. Um, so technology has evolved to allow insurers to embrace omni-channel strategies to provide seamless, personalized, and convenient experiences to customers. So I think the future of insurance looks like this. Um, an independent agent with uh, size and scale 
Um, it's very important because you have to be able to have access and leverage with your carry partners to open up supply markets. The second thing is customers can interact whenever, wherever, how they want human plus technology, not like how we want them to interact with us, but how they want. And this is very important because, you know, we assume that digital, 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 digital is the answer to all of our problems. And reality of it is maybe at certain stages of the value chain, that is correct. Maybe a customer wants to shop digitally, check out with a person, but checking out with a person doesn't mean, hey, come down to the office. Checking out with a person could be I'm texting, you know, um, video chatting like you and I are today. Um, I'm chatting. Um, or there's a uh, step in, the, in, in between there where it's an AI driven experience before you get to a physical human. So the, the, cus the customer's needs vary. They're all different. So you got to give them options on how they want to interact with you. And some people call that digital, you know, um, that's a modern word to it, physical plus digital, you know, that, 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 that has some merit to it. Customer, also customers' prior, priorities of choice, neutrality, need for unbiased and ongoing advice are delivered. Also, insurance options present themselves seamlessly during moments and times when risk needs emerges. So think mortgage originations, think new car purchase, think um, going on a trip. Um, that's that's the, the, the business case for embedded. Um, and then finally, a reduction in the insurance protection gap. Imagine Lori has a personalized individual score to say, here's your protection gap score based on all things considered your risk, your liability, you know, who's giving you that advice. So that's the world I see. Um, and, um, you know, I get excited about the innovation that can come, come along. So I, I, I'm really passionate about this industry evolving from within. And as long as we focus on those things, then we can really uh, deliver what we need to deliver for consumers and small business owners. Absolutely. It's very exciting. And what's next for View by Hub? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because today you're talking to me on our two-year anniversary uh, of View. Happy anniversary. So, Congratulations. So excited. It's, it's been so fulfilling um, to work with a strong group of teammates um, who's driving uh, customer-first innovative solutions and not focusing on just being a shiny object, but being a fundamental value to our consumers and our partners. So for us, we're excited about um, the product growth that we've driven to our platform. When we launched VIEW two years ago, man, we were in 22 states with two products. And now we have all of the personal lines products and life insurance in 50 states as in two freaking years. Um, and so it's been fast and fun and furious. Um, we are growing quite a bit with our strategic partners. So this is the embedded side of our um, opportunity. Uh, we have some strong partners in the homeowner mortgage sector and to the, some of our strong retail partners, uh, some of our strong financial institution partners. We have partners in EV platforms. So we have a wide variety of types of partners that we're growing with. And we're we're not just view, we're viewed by hub. And so we have the strong capital backing of a badass uh, brokerage who just recapped at $23 billion, one of the largest, if not the largest private equity brokerage recaps ever. So certainly they have charged us to grow from an acquisition standpoint. And so we are uh, very close on a few acquisitions. We made one last year into the retail aggregation space, and we have a strong runway to make more uh, to advance this thesis uh, that we feel really great about. And more importantly, our partners and consumers, um, our, our, our customer satisfactions, satisfactions rating are really high because I mean, we have some customers saying, man, I never know a broker could do all of this. For me. So, you know, what I'm excited about is those things that I mentioned earlier, delivering value to Lori and consumers, 
And as long as we focus on consumers and doing what a broker is supposed to do for consumers, I mean, I think that's a winning proposition. And so that, that's what gets me really excited and, and the technology enablement and the processes and the people growth, all of those things come along for the ride. I'm a type of person that I don't sit here and say one thing changes the world. AI creates some new and exciting ways to interact with uh, our consumers. Um, but again, what are you interacting with them for is really what excites me more. So those are the things, m and growth, product growth, strategic partner growth, um, and you know the team that we have inside to see those folks grow in, in a short two years really um, is pretty encouraging and inspiring. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on very exciting past two years, and I wish you all the best in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Brian, this has been so informative, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. You bet. Thank you. That was Brian Davis, Executive Vice President and Head of View by Hub. For AMBAS TV, I'm Lori Chortis. Looking to get the full attention of the insurance industry? We have the platforms that will do just that. Whether it be AM Best TV, AM Best Audio, Best Review Magazine, or Best Day. Find out more by calling AM Best Advertising Sales at 908 439 2200, extension 5399, and have a great day.